بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد so we continue reading from عمدة الأحكام and we complete بإذن الله تعالى this evening the chapter of الأذان and we read the last narration that the author here had mentioned رحمه الله تعالى and he says an Abi Sa'id al-Kudri رضي الله عنه أنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا سمعتم المؤذن فقولوا مثل ما يقول the author he mentioned the narration of Abi Sa'id al-Kudri رضي الله عنه and he mentioned that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم he said that if you hear the muaddin then you should say the likes of what he says. Or you should say the same thing as what he says. So we see that the author, he closed the chapter, Bab al-Adhan, with this narration, the narration of, of Abi Sa'id, radiallahu anhu. And this is with regards to clar- the clarification of the ruling of responding to the mu'adhan and uh, following the mu'adhan in, in his adhan. And... Uh, This is a great sunnah that a believer will show concern for. And it is legislated for a believer whenever he hears the adhan to stop doing whatever he is doing. Regardless if he is doing something virtuous or not at this time, even if he is reciting the Qur'an and he hears the adhan being called, he will stop reciting the Qur'an. Even if he is studying or reviewing some knowledge or some hadith of the Prophet and then the adhan it comes, and the mu'adhan, he begins to make his uh, make the adhan. At that time, he will stop reading, and he will stop studying. If he is speaking with his friends, or his companions, or his family, and the likes like this, and then he's the, he hears the adhan being made, at this time, he will stop everything that he's doing. He will stop everything that he's doing. This is legislated, and this is a great sunnah. And he will listen to the, uh, to the adhan, and to the call of the prayer, and he will repeat after the mu'adhan in the manner that is legislated. And this has a great effect on the heart and also the preparation for the salah. And some of the people of knowledge have mentioned that this is from the greatest means to have khushur in the actual prayer. That one will begin by in preparation, preparing the heart for pondering and understanding and thinking deeply even before entering the prayer. Whenever one hears the adhan, pondering over the meanings of the adhan, the testification that there's nothing worthy of worship except for Allah, and pondering over the meanings uh, uh, of the glorification of Allah, and that, uh, and the testification that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and what that requires and necessitates from believing in everything that he has informed, and complying to his commandments sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and following him, and following him and obeying him, and pondering over these affairs. This is from the greatest means to enter into the salah with a pure heart, with a clean heart, with a good intention, and uh, with uh, awareness and a peace of mind. So therefore, uh, no doubt, reciting the Qur'an is from the best of all deeds. And uh, so reciting the Qur'an is better than, in, in the words of Allah, are, is more virtuous than the Adhan. But the Adhan is a specific time. And a person, he can recite the Qur'an at any time, alhamdulillah. So therefore, the ulama, they have mentioned about these affairs. And he's seeking knowledge likewise. One will stop seeking knowledge at that time. And no doubt the virtue of seeking knowledge is greater than, than the Adhan. But uh, the reality of these affairs, which one is, more, is most virtuous, that there are some actions and deeds that are most virtuous in their self, but at specific times there are other actions that are preferred and take precedence. So therefore reciting the Qur'an no, no doubt is from the greatest of virtues. Or to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to study His deen is from the greatest of virtues. But whenever the adhan is being made, then what is most virtuous at that time is to leave off the rest of the deeds and to repeat after the mu'adhan. And the people have knowledge, they have mentioned with regards to this a great principle and a qa'idah. And with regards to the virtuous deeds, which deeds are the most virtuous? So the people of knowledge they mention al afdalu fi kulli waktin huwa al awfaqu lis sunnati fi dhalik al waqt that the most virtuous deed and action to perform at every time is the one that is most in in most accordance to the sunnah at that particular time. 
So although no doubt it's from the Sunnah to recite the Quran and to memorize the Book of Allah and to recite it and to ponder over it, but at the time whenever the Adhan is being made, the Sunnah is to repeat after the Mu'adhan. So therefore this takes precedence at this time. This takes precedence at this time. And this is something that the people of, of knowledge, they have mentioned, it, that it's very important to gain an understanding in the religion and to know the difference between good and evil. This is something that is clear for the majority of the people. But the, to know the difference between the two goods and which one is better and more virtuous, this is something that requires striving to learn and to understand. And likewise, knowing the two evils and which one is more dangerous and more harmful, likewise, this one, this is something and to distinguish that from the evils itself or to distinguish that from the actions of goodness their self, then this requires fiqh in the deen and understanding. This requires fiqh in the deen and the understanding. From that which will aid us is to understand this principle. Al-afdaru min al-a'mari, yani al-afdaru fi kulli waqt al-awfaqu li-sunnati fi dhalik al-waqt. That the most virtuous deed in every time is the one that is most in, in accordance with the sunnah at that particular time. At that particular time. So we see that uh, the sunnah is to repeat after the mu'adhin. We see in this narration, the narration of Abi Sa'id, radiyallahu anhu, that the, the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, إِذَا سَمِعْتُمْ الْأَذَانِ إِذَا سَمِعْتُمْ الْأَذَانِ If you hear the adhan, or whenever you hear the adhan, meaning sawt al-mu'adhin, huh? meaning the, the voice of the mu'adhin, bil adhan, whenever the mu'adhin, he is making the adhan, whenever you hear the mu'adhin, meaning whenever you hear his voice, whenever he's making the adhan, what uh, the ulama have mentioned with regards to this, they have uh, stated that al-ijaba, ijaba to al-mu'adhin, mashrutatun bil-sama' That to respond to the mu'adhin here, this is uh, under the condition, or this is with regards uh, to the, con or it has a condition with regards to it, and that is that one hears the adhan. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, if you hear the adhan, then, then say the likes of what he has said. So therefore, the one who does not hear the adhan, even if he were to see the mu'adhan, and, and he knows that it's the time for prayer, but, but he does not hear him making the adhan, then he does not repeat. Rather, this uh, repeating after the mu'adhan, it has a condition, and that is that one will hear the adhan. Ha, إِذَا سَمِعْتُمْ الْمُؤَذِّنْ إِذَا سَمِعْتُمْ الْمُؤَذِّنْ So if he did not hear the mu'adhan, then he will not respond. He did not hear. And then likewise, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, فَقُولُوا مِثْلَ مَا يَكُولُ إِذَا سَمِعْتُ مَا الْمُؤَذِّنْ فَقُولُوا مِثْلَ مَا يَكُولُ If you hear the mu'adhin, meaning if you hear him making the call to prayer, فَقُولُوا فَ فَقُولُوا مِثْلَ مَا يَكُولُ Then you say the likes of what he says. In some narration, فَقُولُوا مِثْلَ مَا يَكُولُ الْمُؤَذِّنْ You say the same thing that the mu'adhin is saying. You say the same thing that the mu'adhin is saying. But the people of knowledge, likewise, they have mentioned a benefit, a benefit here, and this is with regards to the lugha. And uh, the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, says, fa, فَقُولُوا The fa here, what is known about the fa uh, is that it has a meaning, and that is, التَّرْتِيبُ وَالتَّعْقِيبُ فَقُولُوا إِذَا سَمِعْتُمْ الْمُؤَذِّنْ فَقُولُوا Then you should say, so it means at, at tartib, you say that right after that, in order. What taqib, meaning you say it directly after that. So therefore, one will not wait till the, the mu'adhan has finished the, the adhan entirely and then repeat after him. This is not the understanding. But rather, whenever he speaks, then uh, after each sentence, then the one who was listening, he will follow him in that. He will follow him in that. And soon whenever he says, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, after that, فَقُولُوا Whenever he says, then we say. After that, whenever we listen and we hear, we follow him precisely right after that. Also, whenever the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, فَقُولُوا مِثْلَ مَا يَقُولُوا The fa here it indicates this, that it comes right after his statement. And also, whenever the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, مِثْلَ مَا يَقُولُوا He mentioned مِثْلَ مَا يَقُولُوا He didn't say, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, مِثْلَ مَا قَالَ What he said, and he, what he is saying, the lights of what he is saying. So all of this, the people of knowledge, they have mentioned that this indicates that the one who repeats after the mu'adhan, he repeats after him whenever he's speaking. And he after him directly, after each sentence. And there are other narrations also that uh, clarify this. And from them, the narration of Umar, 
anhu with regards to the 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 people repeating after the muadhan whenever they hear the adhan. And that the one who does that, and he mentions that sincerity from his heart, and he will have Jannah. Bidnillahi, we will read this narration. Bidnillahi, we will read this uh, this narration. So, uh, what is intended? Likewise, the people of knowledge they clarified. Fakulu mithla ma yakulu. That you say the same thing that the muaddin he is saying. Not in the same way, meaning that not that everybody they will raise their voice and they will be, they will make their voice in the same way as the muaddin, but rather they will repeat after him the same words. What is intended is is to repeat after the muaddin to say the same words that he's saying, not to repeat after him and to mimic him or in uh, to actually uh, make the adhan like him out out loud and the likes like that, but rather to repeat the words that the muaddin he is saying, and this is what the people of knowledge they have they have mentioned. We we see here likewise uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says faqulu this is a command faqulu ay faqulu antum so then you must say so the people of knowledge have differed whether this is an obligation or not and some of the people of knowledge have mentioned it's an obligation for the one who hears the adhan faqulu because al aslu fil amr annahu yadullu al wujub that the origin for a command verb is that it indicates and is referring to an obligatory command but the uh, many of the people of knowledge have mentioned that it's not obligatory but the, and that the command here is lid uh, that the command here is lil istihbab wal nadib that it is recommended and this is because what has come in the hadith of Anas, and it's collected by Ali Imam Muslim fi Sahihihi, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he heard a man making the Adhan. There was one day he heard a man making the Adhan, and whenever the man he made the takbir and he said Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said, Ala al Fitrah. Uh, this man, this man is ala fitra. He's he's uh, he's upon the natural disposition that Allah has created him upon, and he has not changed his fitra. And then uh, Anas he said, رضي الله عنه, that whenever the man he said, "Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah," in this manner, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "Kharajta min al nar." That verily you have gone away from the fire. You have gone away from the fire. So many of the people of knowledge, they have uh, used this narration uh, as an evidence and proof that it's not an obligation. And that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in this narration apparently did not repeat after the Mu'adhan. Therefore, it is not obligatory. Therefore, it is not obligatory. But it is a sunnah and it is recommended. And as I mentioned before, uh, some of the people of knowledge mentioned it's from the means of having khushu' in the salat. And he beginning in this manner and preparing oneself for the prayer even before the entrance of the prayer, just at the time of the adhan. By thinking and pondering over the meanings and trying to understand and reflect on what those meanings or what, what the, the words of the adhan mean and what they require and necessitate. And, and to ponder over this issue, this is very beneficial for the heart of a believer. Especially whenever he is preparing for for the prayer. Especially whenever he is preparing for for the prayer. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam again, he said, فَقُولُوا مِثْلَ مَا يَقُولُ You say the same thing that he's saying. You, you should say the same thing that he is saying. The people of knowledge, they mentioned that this, this statement here, this is عَامٌ وَهُوَ عَامٌ مَخْصُوصٌ This is a general statement. But this general statement it has a specific understanding. And this is because of what other uh, evidence have come to clarify that. Anyone may hear this narration, for, so, so therefore say the same thing that the Mu'adhan is saying and think that he would say the, the exact same thing in the entire Adhan. And this could be understood. And this could be understood, but there are other narrations that clarify what is intended by this. And that there is a portion of the Adhan that the people who listen do not repeat. And they say something different. And they say something different. And this is uh, similar to what has come likewise in the issue of At-Tasmi'ah, whenever raising from Ruku'ah. And uh, from the fundamental principles in the prayer, and uh, clear, and uh, likewise the evidence and proofs on how to pray, is a statement of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam: "Sallu kama ra'aytumuni usalli." Pray in the way you have saw me pray, or pray in the way you seen me praying. And uh, this means that every action and statement should be the exact same way as the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So for this reason, some of the I mean, based upon this generality, uh, then some of the people of knowledge have mentioned 
that whenever the imam raises from ruku' and he says, hamidah, then likewise the ma'moon and the one who is praying behind the imam, he will say the same thing. Hamidah, Rabbana wa hamd. He will say the whole thing. He will say the whole thing. Yani the one who is praying behind the imam. Because the Prophet wasallam, he said, pray as you have seen me pray. And this is how they, they saw the Prophet wasallam praying. But this is a general statement and a general evidence, and this is a text that has been uh, that has been specified, and there has come specific evidence with regards to that. So, therefore, many of uh, of the people of knowledge have mentioned that rather the one who prays behind the imam, he will not say "Sami Allahu Liman Hamid," rather he will only say "Rabbana wa Lakal Hamd," Rabbana. And this likewise has come in, in the narrations in the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, uh, if, if, uh, And if the Imam, he says, Then you all say, And he did not say to say, Likewise for those who are praying behind the Imam. This narration is coming in this chapter, bi ta'ala, And we will have more details about this. But as the people of knowledge mentioned, a shay'u and the mention of one thing is another. So this evidence here is similar to that. فَقُولُوا مِثْلَ مَا يَقُولُ المؤذن. You say the same thing like the Mu'adhan is saying. But this is, uh, this is general. نعم. But uh, a specific evidence has come. And this is the hadith of Umar ibn al-Khattabi رضي الله عنه. And likewise it has come from the hadith of Muawiyah. The hadith of Umar رضي الله عنه is collected by Alima Muslim and we read it. And uh, he said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, إِذَا قَالَ الْمُؤَذِّنُ Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, فَقَالَ أَحَدُكُمْ Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. If the Mu'adhan says, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, and then one of you says, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, ثُمَّ قَالَ أَشْهَدُ وَلَا إِلَهِ إِلَى اللَّهِ قَالَ أَشْهَدُ وَلَا إِلَهَ إِلَى اللَّهِ And then the Mu'adhan, he says, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah and then the person one of you who hears him he says the same thing thumma qala ashhadu anna muhammadar rasulullah qala ashhadu anna muhammadar rasulullah and then the muaddin he says the shahada for the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and then one of you he says the same thing after him thumma qala hayya ala as-salah thumma qala thumma qala hayya ala as-salah and then the muaddin he says hayya ala as-salah قَالَ لَا حَوْلَ وَلَا قُوَّةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ The one who is listening, he says, لَا حَوْلَ وَلَا قُوَّةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ ثُمَّ قَالَ حَيَّ عَلَى الْفَلَاحِ And then the Mu'adhan, he will say, حَيَّ عَلَى الْفَلَاحِ قَالَ لَا حَوْلَ وَلَا قُوَّةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ Then he should say, or he would say, لَا حَوْلَ وَلَا قُوَّةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ And the one who is following the Mu'adhan, ثُمَّ قَالَ اللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ اللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ and then he says, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, meaning the Mu'addin, qala Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And then the person listening, one of you, he says the same thing. Thumma qala la ilaha illa Allah. And then the Mu'addin, he says, la ilaha illa Allah. Qala la ilaha illa Allah min qalbihi. If he said this from his heart, دخل الجنة دخل الجنة رواه مسلم دخل الجنة then he will enter the paradise meaning if he repeats after the muaddin and he is pondering over those words and he says them from his heart meaning with ikhlas and with sincerity and with tawheed and he says them truthfully believing in Allah and believing in these words believing that Allah he is the greatest and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam believing that there is nothing worthy of worship except for Allah and, Muhammad, and, and that everything that's worshipped besides Allah is falsehood Believing in this and stating this, and likewise believing in it, that he's weak himself and that he has no power or might or ability to do any good or protect himself from any harm except by the permission of Allah. Uh, he says, he says, The Prophet ﷺ, he said he will enter paradise if he said it from his heart. Again, another important benefit uh, for listening to the, to the Mu'addin. Stopping what one is doing and listening to the Mu'addin and repeating after him the repetition uh, and the statements that come from the heart. This is from the means to enter paradise. This is from the means to enter to enter paradise. So therefore we see that uh, to say what the Mu'adhan is saying, meaning in everything except for the Hayya ala salah the Hayya ala al-Falah, which is known as Al-Hayya ala Tain. Al-Hayya ala Tain. So whenever the Mu'adhan, he makes the Hayya ala, then uh, the one who is listening, he makes the Hawqala. And we have seen previously that uh, this is a linguistic benefit in the Arabic language, Hayya ala, yuhayilu. 
هي عل هي على تان يعني هي على المؤذن أي قال لا حول قال هي على الصلاة أو هي على الفلاح like this also there is another word that has a meaning of a sentence and it's حوقلة حوقلة يحوقل حوقل حوقلة حوقلة أي قال لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله so عندما يحيئل المؤذن يحوقل السامع <laughs> المتابع the one who whenever the muaddin he makes the hay'ala what does the one who is listening make he makes the hawqala he says la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah so this is uh, the sunnah of the uh, of the adhan and also from that likewise uh, the benefits the people of knowledge have mentioned with regards to this uh, this narration uh, you say the same thing that he says this is also with regards to the iqama that one will say like the mu'adhan he says and you say that in the adhan and also in the iqama and the iqama has been referred to in more than one narration as an adhan and the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he mentioned bayna quli adhanayni salat that between two every two adhans, meaning every two between the iqama, uh, the adhan and every iqama, there is a prayer, and yani a sunnah prayer for those who like to pray it. The point is that the iqama has been referred to in, 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 in more than one narration, and likewise in the in the language of the people of knowledge as as adhan, as an adhan. So here we see that, and to repeat after the mu'adhan, it also includes the iqama, but the iqama is repeated precisely all of it. And there is no evidence that has come to specify, no authentic evidence that has come to specify any part of the Iqama. Therefore, the believer, he will repeat after the, the, the Mu'adhan precisely on the Iqama, even in the Qad Qamat salah He will say the same thing. He will say the same thing. That which has been narrated uh, and ha- has come mentioning that one should say at that time, Aqamaha Allahu wa Adamaha. This is not authentic. This is not authentic on the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So therefore, the Sunnah is to repeat after the Mu'adhan and the Adhan in this manner that has preceded, except for whenever he makes the Hayala, we make the Hawqala, and uh, as for the Iqama, he repeat, repeats after him precisely. The the one who's listening would repeat after the Mu'adhan precisely in all of uh, all of the words in all of the words. Likewise, in the Adhan of Fajr, if one were to hear the Mu'adhan making the Tathweeb and saying uh, Salatu Khairu Min Al Nawm. Likewise, we will repeat after him with that. As salatu khairu min al nawm. We repeat after the mu'adhan with regards to with regards to that. So the issue with regards to al hawqala, we see the time for the hawqala. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. And this is whenever the mu'adhan he makes the hayala, and this is very suitable. Because the, the adhan before the hay'ala, it's adhkar and the mentioning of Allah Azza wa Jalla and His praise and also the mentioning of the oneness of Allah and His right to be worshipped alone and the, of the messenger, the, also the message uh, uh, or the messengership of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam testifying to his risala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is something that we all testify to. But as for the hay'ala, then this is a call. The more that he's calling, the, the, the call is made from the masjid. So at this time he's calling, salah. He's calling the people who are not in the masjid to come to the masjid. He, so it's not suitable. He's calling, it, it's not suitable for, for him to call the people to the masjid and the people to call him to them. And they repeat the same thing. And he's calling them, salah. Come to the prayer. That's what it means. Come, come to the prayer. Come to the prayer. And he come to the masjid. Get ready. Make wudu. Come to the prayer. Come to the masjid. Come to the congregation. So the people who are not in the masjid and, and not calling the people to the prayer, it's not suitable for them to say the same thing here at this point. But rather what is suitable for them to say is, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Meaning this is a statement of istiana and seeking help from Allah. And realizing that you know, I'm being called to this great prayer. And I'm being called to success in this life and the hereafter. And I'm weak. And I'm not able to do that except if my Lord helps me. I'm a slave and I'm under his command and his will. And I hope that he will help me to the good. And I'm being called to this khair. And I'm being called to the falah. And I'm being called to the establishment of this great pillar and congregation with my brothers. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. I have no power and I have no, no ability to do that except by way of Allah. Except by the success from Allah. Except by the success from Allah and the help from Allah subhanahu 
wa ta'ala. So in this manner, the believer, he will, he will remember this affair, and that this, the success is from Allah, and that the power and the aid and the goodness is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the ability to worship Allah it comes from Allah. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Meaning that he's freeing himself. It's not from my strength, it's not from my ability, but rather it's from Allah. It's a favor from Allah that we respond. And uh, this is something also that will have an effect on the heart. In, prepar in his preparation for for the Salat. And he will come to the Salat in this manner, remembering that he has a Lord who, uh, who he depends on and who he needs, who he relies upon, and who he asks for aid and help and support. And it's by the power of his Lord, the quwa of his Lord and the hawl of his Lord that he's able to do good that he's able to do good and that he's able to respond. So then he responds seeking the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is from uh, the greatest means to continue to have this uh, humbleness and this khushur and this awareness in the heart whenever the prayer begins. Whenever the prayer begins. So there are many uh, sunan uh, likewise uh, related to the adhan and after the adhan and adhkar as well. And uh, this uh, work is brief, and we close the chapter with this. And this is the last narration that the author mentioned, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. And the next chapter that we begin with, Idnillahi Ta'ala, Babu Istiqbari Al Qibla. Babu Istiqbari Al Qibla, and the chapter with regards to facing the Qibla. Facing the Qibla, the Kaaba, the house of Allah Azza wa Jal during the prayer. Hada wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.